Massage commission has made the necessary for your comfort. The preparation is very good. I'm very happy, extremely happy, because this is my first time. And I prepare to follow the rules and regulations given to me. لا شريك له لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك لبيك والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Glad to be with you once again on the program as you answer the call. I am Rashda Abu Bakar, your regular anchor. Welcome. The review of the 2023 Hajj continues and tonight we shall be looking at how Nakon and State Pilgrims Welfare Boards discharge their mandates of providing accommodation to the pilgrims in Medina and Makkah. Details in just a moment in our Spotlight segment. Keep watching. Also in the program is making the hatch and the discussion is on the history associated with the Kaaba. Other regular segments of the program include the News Diary, which highlights the activities of Nakon and other stakeholders in the hatch industry. All these are more shortly. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back and thank you for being there. As usual, we begin the program with the news diary. Stay tuned. The chairman of the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, Nakon Al Haji Zikrullah Kulle Hassan, says Nigeria and Turkey are forging partnership on hard matters. The chairman stated this on Thursday when he played host to a delegation from the Turkish embassy in Nigeria. Uh, so, um, I think at another opportunity, we'll give further full briefing on our operations and we seek uh, for means of collaborations between the two uh, countries, particularly in the area of Hajj operations. The Nakon chairman appreciated Turkey for its contribution in spreading the teachings of Islam and preserving its historical values. Speaking earlier, head of the delegation and consular of Islamic affairs at Turkish embassy in Nigeria, Hussein Urjaat, said the purpose of the visit was to share experiences on Hajj and Islam generally in order to forge effective partnership for the benefit of the two countries and beyond. High points of the visit was the presentation of souvenirs to the visitors. <laughs> Yobe State Governor Maimala Buni has approved the appointment of Al Haji Ghana Fantami as the new Executive Secretary of the State Pilgrims Welfare Commission. At a ceremony marking the taking over of the Commission's leadership in Damaturu, the newly appointed secretary solicited for the support and cooperation of staff at the commission in order to effectively serve pilgrims. He then thanked the state governor, Maimala Buni, for the opportunity, saying he would justify the confidence reposed in him. Ghana Fantami took over from Baba Hassan Yusuf, who has served his tenure. <laughs> The Nasara State Pilgrims Welfare Board submitted the 2023 Hajj report on Monday, the 21st of August, to the State Governor Engineer Abdullahi Sule at the Government House in Lafia. The State Chief Judge and also leader of the State Delegation, Justice Aisha Bashir, presented the report. Receiving the report, Governor Abdullahi Sule said, "Government will carefully study the report with a view to improving subsequent Hajj exercises." He commended the state delegation, particularly the executive secretary of the board, Idris al makura and the entire staff, who ensured that the state pilgrims enjoyed their stay in the Holy Land. Speaking earlier, 
Justice Aisha Bashir commended Nasrallah state government for prioritizing pilgrims' welfare, noting that there is the need to have more females on the state ulama team. She also expressed satisfaction with the services rendered to pilgrims in Mecca and Medina, particularly on accommodation and its proximity to Haram Mosque. While briefing journalists after the presentation of the report, the executive secretary of the board, Idris al Makura, appreciated all stakeholders for their support, promising to build on the successes recorded this year in subsequent Hajj. Alhamdulillah, if you are just tuning in, the program is as you answer the call, sponsored by the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, to keep you informed about the activities of the commission and other heart related matters. In the course of every year's Hajj, Conscious efforts are made by the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, in collaboration with State Pilgrims Welfare Boards to ensure that pilgrims are provided decent accommodation during their stay in Medina and Mecca. In our Spotlight segment, we shall open on, on how these responsibilities are assigned between NACON and State Boards. Stay with us. In the course of the just-concluded Hajj, more than 90,000 out of the 95,000 Nigerian pilgrims visited Medina before the commencement of Hajj rites in Mecca. During the stay in Medina, it was the responsibility of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan, to provide accommodation for the pilgrims, while state pilgrims' welfare boards took care of accommodation for their pilgrims in Mecca. And so, during the 2023 Hajj, Nakon discharged this responsibility judiciously. The commission accommodated Nigerian pilgrims in four or five-star hotels located in the Markazia area. Markazia is the area where the best hotels are located in Medina and are close to the Prophet Masjid. The plan for accommodation was finalized after Nakon, states, and other stakeholders concluded the usual pre hajj visits. The visits undertaken in two phases provided the Nigerian delegations the opportunity to hold a series of meetings with Saudi authorities and service providers, leading to the signing of Memorandum of Understandings. The essence of the visit was to go and conclude all services that we had arranged in, during the first pre-hajj visit. We went to now inspect them. We went to do um, contract signing, allocation of... Um, number of pilgrims to various accommodation providers um, and also to uh, engage the kitchens that will provide Nigerian meals or good meals. As expected, uh, when you have about 163 Hajj participating countries coming to uh, the same place to search for services, so you, there is a timeline produced by Saudi Ministry of Hajj and Umrah for each, each country to be able to finish the arrangement for their respective pilgrims. Because once that timeline passes and you did not go on time, definitely you are going to meet a little source of uh, love, demand and supply where you have high rates of accommodation, then you just do, you, you just like uh, you, you go and pick what is left. We visited the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It was during that time that we had the chance and opportunity to discuss with service providers who may make provision for uh, you know, feeding and accommodation. And Alhamdulillah, Plateau State chose the best uh, as it is the tradition of the state. Mm -hmm. Members of the Nakan Accommodation Committee are locating rooms to pilgrims in Medina. Mustafa Abbas headed the committee. We break ourselves into teams. We have team A, team B, you know, that we alternate our operations. So 22, I mean 24 7 were on ground. Anytime flight came in into Medina, we have our team ready, already stationed at the a particular hotel where those pilgrims are to be accommodated. To ensure fairness in the distribution of apartments to pilgrims, the accommodation committee introduced the use of tally cards. So in that process, we previously used to uh, lose a lot of number of bed spaces. So we come up with this uh, 
a new style of uh, giving out these tallies. And these tallies have significantly assisted us in the discharge of our responsibilities. We are able to curtail the loss of bed spaces and, and rooms in the hotel. Equally important was how men and women were lodged separately in the hotels. We normally share or divide the hotel into two. We take the upper up floors for men, while the lower floors is meant for female. Maybe floor one, two, three, four, five for female, then maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen to male. You know, that is how we normally classify. The distribution was done in such a way that some apartments had three persons, while others had four. Some of the pilgrims bear their minds on the facilities and closeness of the hotels to the Prophet Masjid. What I see here is like a five-star hotel. Everything is comfortable. A function of the operation of the door. You can see, you can't just use an ordinary key to, to come in. But with your card, it opens. That's a, a category of five-star hotel. That I know. La Mana Kosaga Masalachi. Muna Kosa Sanankuma Bawa Hala Masabiki make you. Kuma mana agenda each came masavke. Mana tareda kushala here. Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah for oh, as far as I look on is concerned, I really thank the National High Commissioner of Nigeria. They really try um give us the proper and the very fine accommodation. Very, very okay. <coughs> The facilities there is very, very okay. The advantage is that the pilgrims will pay more. But the advantage also is that you are you record low mortality rate that you used to have before. I still know that before you have sometimes issue of accidents. So many accidents in a bit for pilgrims to cross that Ibrahim uh, King Abdulaziz road to the mosque because it's a highway, almost falling highway. Pilgrims do, we do record the accident, but now it has been reduced to, to zero. That is one of the advantages. They have actually done well in retaining that Makazia area. To ensure that Nigerian pilgrims made proper use of the facilities at the apartments, the Nakan Accommodation Committee took time to guide the pilgrims. Let's collect the tag for them. No, 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 no. Okay, do that. Yes. Alhamdulillah, that is why it is always hectic, you know, when we come to accommodate our pilgrims, because we have to take them through all the processes. You know, most of our pilgrims come from the rural areas. They have never come, uh, you know, across facilities like this, maybe the toilets, the lifts, and whatever. A major challenge faced by pilgrims in the apartments was the slippery nature of the tiles in the bathrooms, which led to accidents with some pilgrims fracturing their limbs. This um, came, up, came about because of the kind of footwear they were wearing. And many of them slipped in the bathroom on a slippery tiled floor, and uh, several of them sustained uh, fractures and had surgeries done. Other strategies adopted by Nakon and State Pilgrims Welfare Board for the accommodation of pilgrims was to have a hotel manager in each of the hotels. As in Medina, so also was the arrangement in Mecca, but this time around, State Pilgrims Welfare Boards were in charge. Though some hotels were affected by the demolition taking place as a result of the Saudi Vision 2030 program, Nigeria still secured accommodation close to the Haram. This accommodation become highly expensive and highly complicated. So this is one of the challenges of pre-Hajj visit, which actually I am part of in this year Hajj. And it's not actually limited to Nigeria alone, because I can remember vividly, you hardly have Indonesian pilgrims within Hijra Street. It is difficult before. You hardly have Indonesia pilgrim. The last you have is the Pakistan pilgrim who actually stay immediately after Ibrahim Khalil. But this year, you can see Pakistan pilgrim, Indonesian pilgrim spread all over because of the scarcity of uh, accommodation. As you can see, one of our hotels is where we are, where I'm taking an interview. You can see the place. If it's not the best in town, at least it's one of the top in the town. It's a good accommodation. And all of them are here. So, and we have others again across the area. We have about four hotels here. And if you go around, they're all within the same neighborhood.
the success recorded during the 2023 Hajj in providing pilgrims with decent accommodation made the stay of Nigerian pilgrims worthwhile, as some of them gave testimonies. Uh, it's a good experience because the day we came, we were uh, received very well, we were accommodated very well. They allocated uh, our hotels to us. We don't have any problem. Masha Allah, coming up next is making the heart. Tonight, Sheikh Halil Rumaraya takes us through discussions on the history associated with the Kaaba. Let's hear him. is a building located at the center of the Haram Masjid in Mecca. Its location determines the direction faced by Muslims when performing the Salah. What history is associated with the Kaaba in Islam? How was it built? And what transformation has it gone through over the years? On Making the Hajj tonight, Sheikh Halirub Maraya answers these and other questions. The Holy Kaaba, I can say arguably, is the most significant ornament in the religion of Islam. Uh, one, it is the first house of worship that was established and put in place by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this planet, I mean the earth. Uh, prior to the putting in place of the holy Kaaba, there wasn't any house of worship on this planet. Uh, that is why the Quran says, Inna awala baitin wudi alin nasi, lalazi bibakata mubarakan wa hudal lil alamin. Summarily, the Quranic verse which I have just cited educates us that the first house of worship to be established on the planet Earth is the Holy Kaaba. The Islamic scholar further states that. Secondly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Prophet Abraham, that is Ibrahim, peace be upon him, to migrate to a particular place with his family, I mean Hajar and her son Ismail, it was that portion of the earth, I mean the location where the Holy Kaaba is found today, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to take his family to. And there is no single messenger of Allah prior to the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who has not psychomambulated around the Holy Kaaba. Uh, that is why psychomambulation of the Holy Kaaba is a pillar of the major pilgrimage and it is also equally a major of the lesser pilgrimage. In its years of existence, what major transformation did the Kaaba go through? Uh, the first person to put in place the Holy Kaaba in place is Adam alayhi salam. Uh, but subsequently, as I said earlier, it underwent uh, various stages of renovation and reconstruction. But the way it is today, uh, in the, on, on the basis of size, that means its length and width, it was put in place by Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, uh, under the able assistance of his son, Ismail, alayhi salam. Uh, that is why you will notice that there is a particular portion where Prophet Abraham was standing when he was constructing the Holy Kaaba. It is called Maqam Ibrahim. That means the position of Abraham. This clearly showcases the role Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, played in the construction of the modern Kaaba. Uh, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it possible for that position to be maintained and also to be mentioned in the Holy Quran with a view to commemorating 
and also inculcating the efforts of Prophet Abraham in the hearts of the believers as it affects the construction, the renovation, and the modernization of the Holy Kaaba. The Kaaba has different names. These include Al Masjidul Haram, Baytullah, Baytul Atik, Al Masjidul Awwal, and Baytul Musharraf. Associated with the history of Kaaba, Ahazar al Aswad, or the Blackstone, and a point called Rukun al Yaman. Sheikh Maraya explains further. Among all the tribes of the Arab, uh, the Yemenites, that means the Arabs of the Yemen, are considered even today as the most important uh, tribes among the Arabs. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in many traditions uh, affirmed that. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given a particular corner of the Holy Kaaba their name. That means a particular corner of the Holy Kaaba has been named by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala after the people of Yemen. So that is why it is called Ar-Rukun uh, al-Yamaniyu. That means the corner of the Yemenites, the corner of the people of Yemen. And as you know, between that corner and Hajar al-Aswad, whenever one is psychomambulated around the Holy Kaaba, they are expected to be saying, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa gina azabanna. Why are Muslims kissing the black stone? The kissing of the Hajar al-Aswad was first done by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So today, if one kisses the precious stone, that is the Hajar al-Aswad, then one has emulated the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. For even doing such an emulation, one will definitely accrue substantial reward to themselves. Subsequently, all the caliphs, whenever they went to the city of Mecca with a view to conducting either the lesser pilgrimage or the pilgrimage, they were also seen kissing the Hajar al-Aswad because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa kissed it. Alhamdulillah, now it's time to know the winner of last week's quiz and also the question for this week. Good luck. Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, apart from Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, name the other prophet associated with history of Muqami Ibrahim. The correct answer is, Prophet Ismail alayhi salam. The winner is Aisha Abu Bakr from Abuja. She provided the answer ahead of others. Aisha Abu Bakr will be contacted on how Nakon will reach her with the prize she won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakon's effort in social investment in Nigeria. Now to the quiz for this week. And the question is, mention three other names by which the Kaaba is called. Again. Mention three other names by which the Kaaba is called. Text your answer to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry the name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Once again, good luck to you. Up next are your messages. <laughs> Rahmat Yaqub sent the first message. It reads, Assalamu alaikum. I congratulate Nakon for a successful 2023 Hajj. May Allah reward you all at Hajj House. Sha'awan Safian from Nasrallah State sent in the second message. It says, I am calling on Jai's Bank to open branches in Nasrallah State. As those of us wishing to participate in Hajj Saving Scheme cannot access any branch in the state. This is where we draw the curtain on today's program. See you same time next week with another edition of the program. But before we go, remember that you can send your messages, comments, observations, and questions through our mobile phone number and other social media platforms. Once again, 
Thanks for watching. Ma assalam. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا